This is a collaboration with All Time Conspiracies. Make sure to follow the link at the end of this video to check out theirs. If you look around YouTube, you'll find plenty of videos claiming that the moon landings were faked, or that NASA has been lying to us, or that the Earth is flat. And while these opinions are largely considered to be a little bit crazy, they do offer a chance to think about the repercussions if such a scenario was actually the case. What if we really never went to the moon? To understand why we wouldn't have gone to the moon, we first need to understand why we did. Back in the 1950s and 60s, the United States and the Soviet Union had, to put it lightly, less than friendly opinions of one another. As two global superpowers, the US and the USSR were constantly locked in a state of one-upsmanship, trying to outdo the other's achievements. So it should come as no surprise that when the Soviet Union successfully launched Sputnik into space, making it the first artificial satellite in orbit, the United States felt the need to retaliate in a big way. The US dumped huge sums of money into researching and funding new technology and science to find some way to outshine the USSR. From this frenzied drive to compete sprung a fully-fledged American space program, which eventually landed two men on the moon in 1969. So really, we have the Soviet Union to thank for NASA. With that in mind, if the USSR hadn't spent so much time and money on their space program, perhaps the United States wouldn't have felt the need to develop their own, instead choosing to focus on more traditional ways of beating their enemies, like big guns and bigger bombs. If the United States chose not to pursue the space program, the world today would be a very different place. As of 2017, it's estimated that for every $1 spent on NASA funding, the US economy grows by $10 through commercial use of NASA-developed technology. What happens if that all goes away? Let's go back in time, to the heat of the space race. Perhaps the cornerstone of the US response to Sputnik was former President Eisenhower's National Defense Education Act, which poured massive sums of money into the US education system. As the 1950s drew to a close and the 60s began, PhD intake at American universities nearly tripled, especially in scientific fields like physics, all in preparation for the graduates to provide new brain power for the Apollo program. While NASA was trying to figure out how to put a man on the moon, they determined that there was a very real need for smaller computers to use in their spacecraft, as computers in those days often took up entire rooms. When a company called Fairchild Semiconductor began experimenting with a new invention called the Integrated Circuit, the predecessor of the microchip, NASA ordered a million of them to kickstart the fledgling industry. Without the space race, we might not have developed the microchip for many more years. And to go a step further, two employees from Fairchild would later found a little company called Intel. The very Intel that makes the chip inside my computer that makes this video possible. Besides shrinking the footprint required for NASA's spacecraft computers, electronic microcomponents led to the personal computer, the laptop, and early handheld devices. Perhaps more important than the technological boost the space race gave the public is the inspiration and mindset the Apollo program gave students and children growing up and graduating through the 60s and 70s. Bob Richards, space entrepreneur and co-founder of Moon Express, was one such student, and founded the global group Students for the Exploration and Development of Space in 1980. This group was headed for a year by none other than Jeff Bezos, who was inspired by the Apollo program and later pursued his own lofty goals and founded Amazon. That's a bizarre thought. Without the space race, we might not have Amazon. And not only Amazon, we might not have SpaceX, or Virgin Galactic, or even Silicon Valley, which was essentially born out of the necessity of the Apollo program and the development of the integrated circuit. The technological trickle-down from the space race was world-changing. Former NASA flight director Glenn Lunny witnessed this dramatic shift and says, Apollo really did drive our industry. We were asking people to do things that were probably 10 or 20 years faster than they otherwise would have done. And they knew it. They stepped up to it and succeeded. Today's cell phones, wireless equipment, iPads, and so on are a result of the fact that the country did this high-tech thing and created this large portfolio of available technologies. Think about that for a moment. Consider how your life would be different if technology today was 20 years behind where it is now. For starters, you'd be using a Dell, IBM, or HP tower computer. The iMac wouldn't hit the scene for another year. You'd communicate with friends using AOL Instant Messenger, and hear this sound a lot.
Say goodbye to Google Search, you'd likely be using Yahoo, or if you're on the cutting edge, ask Jeeves. You probably wouldn't even be using the now-hated Internet Explorer yet. You'd be browsing the very primitive web with Netscape Navigator. Your nice 4K screen would be gone, replaced with a 20-pound 640x480 resolution CRT monitor. Gone are all your favorite games. No more Minecraft, Battlegrounds, Call of Duty, or Halo. But at least you have Quake 2. If you wanted to take your music with you on the go, you could spend $1,000 on a CD burner, clip on a sweet portable CD player, and be the coolest guy on the block. Like taking photos, you'd likely still be using film. But if you really wanted a digital camera, you could go for the new Fujifilm DS7, with a stunning resolution of 0.3 megapixels. And of course, we can't forget the most important item of all, your phone. With 20-year-old technology, you've got a couple of options the Nokia 6110, or the super cutting-edge Motorola StarTac, the world's first flip phone. The StarTac would give you a whole 60 minutes of talk time for a reasonable $1,000. And that's all just the tip of the iceberg. The space race spurred so many advancements in almost all areas of life, including military, productivity, navigation, and communication, all of which we take for granted today, both as a country and as individuals. Needless to say, the world would be a very different place had we not decided to land humans on the moon. How far behind would we be today? It's hard to say. But it's clear that the innovation of the Apollo era laid the groundwork for all the technological marvels we see in our daily life and around the world. When you think about it in terms of individual items, it's amazing to think what we would have missed out on had we not gone to the moon. And with that in mind, who knows what we could achieve with another lofty goal in space. Remember the conspiracies I mentioned at the beginning of this video? One of the most popular is the thought that maybe famous director Stanley Kubrick faked the moon landings. Want to learn more? Check out this video by All Time Conspiracies. You can watch my other space-related videos by clicking here, or for something completely different, you can click here to watch me play games with a friend on my new gaming channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.